I think James touched on it yesterday, as well as all the different speakers you had from. Partners are critical to Zebra. Like everything we do, we think of you guys first. Okay, and so this session is going to introduce you into more details around some of what you heard yesterday from James around the EAI platform and what it is. Okay, um, I'm going to try and make it interactive. So I'm going to ask some questions, just you know, raise of hands type thing. So, um, I want to talk to you about enabling workflow in the enterprise. Um, today, a lot of you build applications using our devices, uh, and those applications help a lot of people increase productivity. Uh, but what we're seeing is people are asking for more, and I'm sure you guys are already seeing it. You want to do more, and so I'll give you examples of some of the things that we're seeing and how we believe, from a Zebra perspective, uh, the workflow is changing, and so you guys can give us feedback. I'm going to talk about data, which is the new reality. Some of you might have heard it's the new oil. There are different ways to look at it, uh, but it, it's obviously very important. Uh, talk about the data framework, uh, the partner play, what is in there for you guys. Uh, I'm going to talk to you about some early solutions that we've built off the same principle and that we want you guys to also consider. And then I'm going to introduce you to the partner accelerator. This is also something I want feedback from, from a timeline perspective, because in North America, you know, we're, we're looking to launch in July. July, I know, is a big summer month in Europe. So it'll be good to get feedback if that's a good time frame for you guys to actually apply. So the background there, I have uh, Pokemon Go. I hope all of you have tried it. You know, if you're in technology, I think you should try it, even if you don't like the game, or at least get your nephew, son, daughter to try it. And the reason I have it there is Whoever played Candy Crush, OK? And Candy Crush was an application that ran on the phone, pretty much. And the only thing Candy Crush used the phone for was a host. You install Candy Crush onto the phone, and you play your game. It didn't require any information about the device, OK? Fast forward to Pokemon Go. Pokemon Go was a game that actually started taking the data from the device. So we used the GPS information to determine your location. So the Pokemon I see in my neighborhood is totally different from what you see in your neighborhood. Why? Because it knows the GPS location. The accelerometer determines the pace. So I know exactly how fast I'm walking to determine what I see. So two people could be walking on the same path, but at different pace, and they see two different things. OK? And then we take the camera to actually visualize and capture the Pokemon, as well as the location to determine the habitat. And why is this important? This is the consumer world, OK? And I always tell everybody, look at what's happening in the consumer, because that's what's going to drive what we're going to do in the enterprise. Okay. What this guy did here was take more information from the device. They weren't just hosting on the device. Apple and Android opened up services on the device to them. And they were able to create an application that's been the most successful application in the world today. That's the challenge and opportunity you have. So if we look in the enterprise today, as we sit here today, there are tens of millions of changes being sensed in every enterprise environment that you've ever worked in. Think of retail, <coughs> think of manufacturing, healthcare. There's something happening right now that's being sensed and being captured. Same with images, OK? Location, things are moving. The assets you've built a tag for is on the move. So what is your application going to do to take advantage of this new sets of information? That is the opportunity you have. You have to start thinking of applications that you're building as beyond being a single silo-based application. The application has to start considering, how can I take advantage of this information? How can I take advantage of capture information, movement information? That's the opportunity we have, and that's what's going to transform workflows. Okay? To enable this, you need a lot of services. So I was talking to a few partners out there yesterday, and they talk about some of the data that Zebra provides to them today, that they don't get enough. They don't get enough device information. Okay? Because they don't get enough device information, the application actually has blank fields. MCL right outside there. 
they have an application that they're trying to help other people build new applications using integration services, but they're not getting enough data from Zebra. And when they do get it, enough data from Zebra using the EMDK, they have to build it each time a new OS comes out. We don't want that because that doesn't make them successful. What we want is we want to standardize that information, give them the device data they want, so they don't have to worry about it at the lower level. So you heard about systems of reality. That is when you're taking the sensor information in real time, the analytics, and the cloud could be private or public. Okay? And what does that point to? Points to data-driven solutions, digital transformation, and most importantly, workflow transformation. We want to get to the point where you're not just telling people what to press on the application. You're telling them the best thing to press on the application. Okay? So how are we going to do it? You saw this framework yesterday. Again, it's very simple. Uh, I personally believe that every industry is going to have platforms. Uh, there's going to be what I call the digital giants, and we can't ignore them. Those are the Amazon, the Facebooks of this world. We're going to take data from them. And then you're going to have industry vertical platforms. This is domain platforms that understand the vertical. Zebra understands location, asset, and movement. Okay? So when you look at this, Obviously, Zebra devices are at the edge of the network. I always, I always give this example. We're actually the first people that capture what happens at any scenario in the supply chain or in the enterprise. That scan event, today a lot of you capture that scan event and feed it into an application. But that scan event could also mean an event. It could mean that I just scanned the last item in that inventory. Why can't that information feed your application, and prompt someone else to do something. That's where we want to get to. So there's the data capture from the, from the device itself. And then we talk about connectivity. So we want to simplify the connectivity of how we extract data from our devices. We want to standardize that so that data opens up to you. You don't have to worry about different versions of EMDK or how you actually extract the data. We want to share the data. One thing is obvious. The data we capture are being used by multiple folks. And today, a lot of you are building that integration yourself. You're figuring out, OK, I want to get this device information from Zebra. You're building it. You're building it. We want to move that out. We want to build it so you can focus on the application layer. When we talk about analytics, again, analytics, I always think, is very driven based on the use case and the vertical. We don't know all the use cases. But we can standardize some basic analytics that gives you intelligence so you can customize and build analytics for that particular vertical. That is where you want to be spending your time, the end user value, not the basic stuff. Let's do the basic stuff. And again, obviously, it integrates into legacy systems of record uh, as well as enterprise. You can see up there, it's still going to be partner applications. We do have some Zebra applications just because we built them and we're using them, and I'll show you some examples. <laughs> but at the end of the day, we want you guys to build it. So when we look in details, what do we have? I break it down into three key components. We talk about the lowest level, so the device connectivity, data configuration, and monitoring. This should be standard, okay? We're already offering this on a lot of our devices today. Uh, in the middle of it, we talk about the data capture, so that includes the storage, the standardization, filtering of the data. Uh, we talk about what we call <laughs> near real-time analytics. So that is, I know an event just happened, can I inform you about that information? We have aspirations to get into big data and machine learning. What does that mean? Can we start predicting things based on <laughs> historical data? So we talk a lot about batch processing, and I'll show you that as well. And then, of course, at the top of it, we want to just open a RESTful API and provide you the tools to extract the data, use the data, and build your own applications. Okay. So when we look at it from a block diagram perspective, this is kind of what it looks like. There's a standard Zebra library agent that goes into all our devices. We're starting with our handheld devices. So we want to simplify and extract all the data from our handheld devices and make that available to you. If you look to the left of that, you can see there's just current status information, which includes things like properties, status, settings, 
that is just going to be made available through an API. So some of you just want all that information. You don't care about whatever analytics Zebra is going to give you or whatever near real time. You want to build it yourself. That's perfectly fine. For those of you that were ever introduced to Zatar, that component of the service comes from the legacy Zatar. Okay? If you move to the left, to the right of that, you have what we call near real time analytics. So that is us understanding what's happening and <laughs> taking that data to offer a near real time event. So something just happened, you should be notified, or your application can be notified. You can write an application and say, listen, every time the battery gets to 20%, my application is no longer going to be optimized. I want you to tell me when that battery level is at 20%. So I can reduce the features on that application so that person using that application can be more productive. These are the type of things you should start thinking about. That's the capabilities your applications have. They have the opportunity to take intelligence that's happening with the device to actually improve that. We also want to support data injection. So that is data coming from something else. So think of a scenario like Weather, for example, we know it's going to rain. What does that mean for the supply chain or the delivery guy out there? Can your application take advantage of that information? If you know it's going to rain and you tell that delivery guy the rain is coming, does he help him reroute rather than just going through or sitting in his truck because it's going to rain and he had no visibility to it? Your application should be able to take advantage of that type of information. Weather information is all out there, but are our applications using it? No. Can we make that easier for you to actually integrate into your application? Yes. And then, of course, we talk about the batch processing. So batch, this came from the AVP legacy. Okay, that's our asset visibility platform. We always had the Hadoop capabilities in-house. We're storing a lot of data. So we want to start looking at that data and see what can we tell from that data. For us, we're already using it today because it's extremely important for us and our devices. And I'll show you an example of how we're using it. <coughs> so. When you look at that, this could all be cloud components. Uh, we have customers that have specifically said, yes, we know cloud is the future, but we're not ready for cloud. So we have an on-prem solution as well. You would notice the on-prem doesn't extend into batch analytics. The reason behind that is it's just not cost effective to start storing a lot of data on-prem. So we don't recommend that. But if your client wants to do that, then it can be done. Okay. So why is this important? One of the ones I keep stressing is the faster time to market. If today we make more device information available to you, that's less time you have to spend figuring out how you extract that data information. Okay. We want to work with you. We want to understand what other information you need from us. If we can standardize that, then more applications can actually be built using that. Okay. One of the things I liked yesterday that Jack mentioned was, you know, it, it's easy to think of Android and say, well, I'm just going to go build an Android device using consumer data. And then you get people that have security issues and say, Google's taking all my data. That's why Zebra went and did the GMS version of, data, of Android. We spend time looking at standard default information. Because I know some of you are thinking, well, I can get this information from Google. You could. But is it in the right format? Is it the right way? That's what we want to provide. Okay? We talk about integrated Cloud Connect. So this is really an IoT type architecture. We're using AM Embed. AM makes all the chipsets. Uh, we're going to use that library, the Embed library, to actually connect all our devices. What that means is you get chip to cloud connectivity and security. Okay? So we help address all that issue around security. That again becomes standard. You don't have to write the library or the EMDK. It's lower risk. The more people that use the platform, again, it's completely kind of open source architecture, right? The better the platform. And then I talked about the integrated analytics, right? Basic services that's going to come from their real time analytics. You can still build analytics from your capabilities perspective. That is absolutely fine. You can use the analytics we provide you as a basic functionality. So, why should you care? And I hope you care already. Um, we believe the next generation of applications are going to be based on location as well as machine learning and AI. Location is important. Contextual data really matters to what your application is doing. If you believe your application is only relevant, just irrespective of the location, 
then you need to go spend some time with your customers and walk through with them. Because the way they use it at different points in the, in the environment is critical. That location information is stuff we can provide. We want to provide that information. We want you to use that location information. And we talk about machine learning and AI. So again, the more data we can store and collect. So today, for example, Zebra hasn't really done a lot of collecting of the data. We haven't understood what people are doing with that data, our devices. But we want to get to the point where we have better intelligence around that and know exactly what <coughs> folks are doing and know exactly how they're doing it. So give you some quick examples. This is called Spotify. It's an internal Zebra application. Okay? Our engineering team uses this today to determine exactly how our devices function. To the left of that, that's some of the data that we're collecting on the device. Okay, it's going through the platform. So it's helping collect enterprise scale data. Okay, storing the data, filtering the data, aggregating the data. From an application perspective, the reason we use this is to understand exactly how our devices are performing in custom environments. What application is top on the device? What application is costing the device to reboot? Why is the device rebooting? How is the battery performing? We're <laughs> using that information in-house. Now reverse this application and look at that data and say, can my application take advantage of that data? It's the same data set, but you're building your application completely for a different use case, and that's fine. But the data is standard. How you extract the data is standard. The documentation is standard. So this is something we really like. Today the, device, uh, the application is managing way over half a million devices to give you the scalability of it. Okay. That's an, it's an example of a use case of how you can start taking advantage of data in your own application. The next is OBS AVS. Again, it's powered on the platform uh, using device information, so both on the printer side as well as uh, the handheld device side. Uh, the caveat here is the connectivity on the printer side is still based on a third party agent. Uh, but the, the plan is to move into a Zebra agent. Uh, but the information being extracted is pretty much standard. And we're using that to provide our services team intelligence into uh, how the devices are performing and offer service contracts. Okay? Um, James talked on this yesterday. This is a use case we have in healthcare. One of the things you notice to the left of that is this is actually taking data from two different devices. Okay, so we're using the handheld device as a gateway. And we're using a sensor that's actually <laughs> on the wristband. And that's the other thing. You can start integrating data from multiple sources to actually feed into one application. And that is going to increasingly happen more. Your application is not going to exist in silos. The whole concept of the Internet of Things is that you want to take data from multiple devices and multiple sensors. So you have to think about that. Some of you will have great expertise in certain sensors. But you might rely on someone else to provide you complementary sensors to provide the intelligence you need. And so in this particular example, uh, we, we do the data services as well. There's the data collection, filtering, aggregation, data storage. Uh, we do the high level basic analytics, as you can see. But again, a partner can take that same data set and say, OK, my client has all these wristbands. I want to build a different application. Our application is just for uh, tracking a particular use case door to balloon, healthcare. Okay? You might go in and say, you know what, I just want to track kids, but I want that same data set and I want to focus on an application just for pediatrics. We've not built anything for that. We don't have plans to build anything for that. But that's something you guys can do because again, it's the same data set, it's standardized, the documentation is there, you can easily use it and it's going to shorten your time to sign, time to market. So, Next steps for partners. <coughs> to help us get here, one of the lessons we learned from the Zatar days was, you know, we try to do everything at once. And one of the things we want to avoid here is do the same thing. So first, we're listing out the type of data we can collect today. This is going to be data set that's available on our devices. Okay? We try to break them down into different types of devices. 
Uh, the sensors are actually third-party sensors. They're Bosch sensors. Um, so we're working with Bosch. We've partnered with them to get data sensors from them. And then the rest are Zebra devices. Okay. Now we talk about the early accelerator pro program. A lot of you understand how accelerator programs work. The idea behind here is we want to select a finite number of partners that will co-develop on the platform. So those previous data sets that you saw, we'll make those data sets available to you from a live network. Okay? You will not know the customer, but if you want to build something for healthcare, you would tell us. We'll provide you the data from a healthcare environment. You will see how the data gets extracted. You have an API. You have someone working with you to actually design and architect your, uh, your solution. And then you will build something. And the value of that is you will go through that process for the rest of the partner community that are not involved in the accelerator program. You will make sure that we can build a complete solution that enables us to demonstrate the value of the platform. And hopefully at the next app forum, you'll be the one presenting the value of the platform and not Zebra. Okay? Um, again, like James mentioned, uh, we will make the device, the data available to you for free based on whatever vertical that you're looking to work with. Uh, we will provide the, the right resources to work with you over the period of the time to make sure that you have the right level of visibility with a Zebra. Um, so to enable this, uh, we're going to open the applications at the end of July. Uh, that's why I asked, is that a good time frame? The application is going to be open for a month. So you'd have a month to actually fill out the application. We're asking for generic information, what vertical you want to work on, what type of data do you want to use, do you have a high level idea of the application that you're trying to build, do you have dedicated resources to actually work on that, and then we'll provide you more information. How long is the program going to be for, how many partners are being selected. Um, we will announce the winners in September, and then the program itself starts in October. Okay. We would love for you guys to submit and participate. Obviously, we're not going to select everybody, um, but we're going to select a few, and we're going to make it transparent. We're going to share the information as the partners develop. We'll actually have a storyline to show you guys. There'll be areas you can go and see what other people are doing. You can see what they're going through. Um, again, so let me get a show of hands. Applications opening in July for completion in August. Is that something that's fine with you guys? Yes or no? Yes? 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 Okay, good. Because I was slightly worried for summer. But yes, so you will all get information. You can take a picture of this, uh, where the URL will be. But you will all receive emails uh, two weeks before the application actually opens. And then we'll also send an, an email the day the application opens. There will also be reminders just before it closes, so you can submit. Um, there will also be a comment box. So again, like I said, we'll tell you the data sets that are there. Um, if there's something that's missing or you would like, we'd like to understand that as well. Um, so as we build out the program, we can figure out uh, what is going on. OK? That is what I had. And I think I have time for questions. So if there are any questions in the room. So how this integration is going to work out there and if you are to integrate with the Spotify system? Yeah, so Spotify uh, is an internal system right now. Um, but the data we use for Spotify is data that we're willing to make available to partners. And you will access that through an API. And can we feed in some data as well from sensors? Absolutely. Yes, that's the whole idea. Um, you can feed in data from sensors. Uh, so if it's not a sensor that we support today, if it's a, an AM embed enabled sensor, or you can, we'll make the library available. Uh, you can put that library on the sensor. And that will allow the sensor to talk into the platform. So you can extract the data as well. So yeah, I have a general question about the architecture and the way you connect the, the devices yeah. to, uh, to the system. Yeah. Before, for, uh, around Zeta, there was an edge box yep. to be able to translate. Uh, the connection and what is the ID? Is it still there? <coughs> so, 
Okay, so the question for those that, don't, that didn't understand, uh, previously with Zatar, we had an edge box. And the reason we had the edge box for Zatar was because we couldn't put the library on the actual device. So we tried to connect legacy Zebra printers that were never really designed to be connected to the internet. So the only way you could get around that was to have a gateway that would host the library, and then you had a physical connection from the printer to the gateway, and then the gateway into Zatar. We're not using the gateway anymore. Okay, so initially we're not going to support legacy Zebra printers. We will support Link OS printers. Okay, and that would have the library enabled directly onto the printer. So there's no need for a gateway. Okay, we want to move away from the gateway because part of the experience as well was the gateway was extremely expensive. Fine, granted it was early days of the IoT and gateway costs are coming down. We've actually tested the library on say like a Raspberry Pi. So if you still have a scenario that you want to connect the legacy device, you could potentially put the library on it, but we don't support it. So the, the connector to the platform are what? Uh, what how, how is the connection made between the devices and, and the platform? So there's the that's the printers and the Yeah, so there's a co-op library that's going to go on the on the device itself. It's preloaded onto the Zebra device. Okay? That allows that library to talk directly into the platform. Yes, it's dedicated agents on the device. And we're starting with the handheld devices. And so the expectation is that early next year, all our handheld devices that ship will have that agent pre-installed. No? Yeah, if we want to connect sensors. Uh, yeah, same thing. Device, this agent. Yes, so you just download the agent. The agent is actually now on GitHub. So you can download the agent onto that sensor. That will allow the sensor uh, to talk into the platform. Okay. Thank you. Okay. I was just going to ask with the, what might pass it down, legacy devices and TC70, things running KitKat, will we be able to put stuff on them as well? Yes. For, for the handheld devices, it's significantly easier um, because we could do that. Uh, I, I don't know what the exact roadmap would be on those, but yes, the expectation is that legacy handheld devices will be able to support this. Uh, there might be a you know Android version update that you'd need to do, but uh, yeah. Okay. Uh, is your system ready for Google Tango technology? Yeah, good question. Um, no, not yet. But that's that's. Are you planning? Yes, that's exactly the kind of feedback we want. We want to know what you guys want to build out there. Uh, like I said earlier, I don't know if you guys heard. I personally believe there's going to be what we call, what I call the digital platforms. Google, Facebook, Amazon, you have to integrate with those guys. They have so much data and value that they can add value to us, okay? So the platform is going to want to support all those type of digital platforms. Again, remember the architecture where you have data injection. That's exactly the thinking that we have. Can we inject data from something else? Because if you believe you're going to exist in silos without those guys, then I think you're living in the fantasy world. They have all the information. And they're, they're constantly looking to push the envelope and capture more information. So what we want to do is make sure that we can align with them and take data that they're providing. It might be in our environment. And at the same time, so you guys know, they're talking to us as well because the information you guys are capturing at the edge of the network, they don't have it. Google uses an algorithm to just predict what's in a store. But your applications are scanning what's actually in the store, so you have better information than they do. So you have to have platforms that can actually do data exchanges with those type of information. And that's potentially something you guys can monetize in the future. Right? If you work with your client and say, listen, I'm providing you this information in real time so you can scan, know exactly what's happening in your environment, but I also want to anomalize this data so I'm not going to see what the store is, but I want to see where the location is and I want to provide this information to another platform. That's your data. That's potentially something you could do. And you feed that data into a third party application. Everybody's looking for data. And that's the thing, that's the mindset you guys should wrap your head around. What other information can you capture from that environment? What other information are you capturing today that you haven't aggregated to actually make sense of what else is going on? Yeah. The business model that we want to apply for that is the same model that we want to apply for that. 
No, so, so the business model for Zatar was uh, kind of a payment per device. Uh, this is not going to be related to the device. This is just going to be pure data play. Um, so it's going to be kind of a license uh, for the data. So if it's you know a zebra data, there'll be X license for unlimited access of the data. Uh, if it's a customer data, you as a partner that's engaging on the application would have to engage <coughs> with the partner, uh, with the end user to say, so if it's retail, for example, uh, they own the data. So Zebra doesn't own the data. So if you're scanning their inventory, it is their data. But there's also the negotiation that goes on now we see where people say, yes, it's my data. I'm going to use it for my application. But you can randomize the data and use that random data. Okay, so that, that's an opportunity that exists. Okay. And we haven't figured out exactly how that will work. That's one of the things that we hope we'll find out during the accelerator program. There might be data that we're providing in that data list that's just so random that there's nothing we can charge on it. And we'll provide you that, that's fine. But we also believe that there's data that we're capturing today that is actually valuable. It might be the location information. I'll tell you one of the good use cases I saw now, and this guy's want to apply as well. Um, they do training, and they do training for retail customers, okay? And they want to train sales associates that actually don't do their work well. And the information they want is the movement of the device when the application is actually launched, okay? So you're doing a retail scan. They want to know exactly how that user is doing it. And based on the movement of that device, their application will launch a video to say, you're not doing your work well. But that's real-time information based on the events that's actually happening, right? So in that particular example, the accelerometer data might be something that we provide to them and just say, okay, well, this is basic. Or it might be something we say, listen, we have to filter out a lot of this accelerometer information to give you the information that actually means this person is not well-trained because you can't take all the data. All, right, all the data is not gonna show anything. You have to filter the data, aggregate the data. So that's the thinking behind this. Okay? Any other questions? Yeah. I have a question about also platform support. So what if we have like, uh, uh, our application is using uh, iOS and Windows uh, 10 mobile. <coughs> I don't know enough to say yes or no, but uh, what I suspect is the OS version layer shouldn't really matter if we have the agent. Uh, I don't know that we actually supported that, so that's something I need to check and get back to you. Um, but yeah, the, the expectation for us is the OS shouldn't matter, okay? Um, we want to have this embedded, and that, that's the beauty of the AM embed. It, it's embedded on the chipset level, okay? So that's in the silicon. That means that device just has chip to cloud connectivity. Okay, so then you can then put your OS onto the device. So yes, so it shouldn't matter, but I will check what the roadmap is on, on that particular use case. Okay. Sorry, can I just add something? Yeah. Excuse me. Um, yeah, you were saying about the accelerometer data. Mm -hmm. uh, I would say to Rum, think about what Bayo was saying there and challenge your thinking about the kind of applications or services that you provide. When you think about what, what Bear was saying about you know, understanding the movement of someone, you, know, you can think of solutions that are as small as providing an event based on the data to show something that someone has done, and that could be a health risk, it, you know, it could be the movement that someone's done that could cause damage to them, anything. You know, the solutions you're providing today are are based on application. The solutions you provide in the future could simply be based on the data that provides something of value that you can sell to an end user or customer. So when you think about this as a platform, think beyond just the application, think yeah. about the kind of things that you can be creating. So actually, let me, let me take you to this uh, healthcare one. Um, and I'll tell you how this has evolved as a solution as well. So, when we started this, right, it was a pure, you know, we do the wristbands in healthcare. You get the wristband and it's, you scan the barcode, it's good for patient ID, so you know who the patient is, so you can provide the patient with the right information. And then we had a hospital say, listen, I have 
an issue with heart attack patients, right? It's recommended that a heart attack patient has to get treatment within 90 minutes. It's called delta balloon time, okay? And the challenge they had was it was manual time recorded. And if you've ever been in a healthcare environment, it's chaotic. So what happens is the ambulance comes, there's a patient in a heart attack, everybody's running to try and get that patient into the surgery. Nobody really captures the time. So what happens is the time capture is actually after the fact. And they come back and say, what time do you think that ambulance arrived? It's like, I think it was 9, 9.30 time frame. So they never really had an accurate count. And the regulators started measuring their time frame because they said, listen, we're going to rank hospitals based on their delta balloon time. So we said, okay, we do the wristbands. What if we put a sensor in the wristband? So we can tag exactly when that patient arrives in the hospital. And then you can get full visibility from when he arrived to when he actually got treatment. That was stage one. That was just, let's capture the information in real time. The next thing that happened was they said, wait, you know, if you're capturing the information in real time, we want to know how we're tracking. From a caregiver perspective, are we within 90 minutes? Are we within 75 minutes? Are we within two hours? So what we did was just take zebra tablets and put them on the wall, and we could show the caregivers, once they walk within proximity of that tablet, it will display the time. And say, patient blue, 165, is 35 minutes. The next thing we did, because we actually now had enough data sample set and understood how they were actually walking, was we could start comparing that current time to a benchmark time. So if you were within the waiting room, for example, we could tell you that, okay, you're still green because the standard average wait time in the waiting room is 10 minutes and you're at nine minutes. If you exceed that, we can start telling you that you're actually running behind time. Now think about it. This is all just data being reused, okay? The next thing that happened was they came and said, you know, stroke patients are also this critical. We want to track delta needle time for stroke patients. Same data, different application. Now where this got really exciting was they now said, you know what, we want to do the whole ER. We want to know when patients come into the ER, how long they're waiting, and where they're going to. So we extended it to ER patients. Same data, same wristband, but different application. And what's happening with the application side is nothing changes apart from the access points that you're pointing to. Just create the application based on the workflow you want to create and point to the same data points, okay? The next thing we found now is they said, you know what, in ER, we don't have enough beds. And if you've ever been in the ER, at least in North America, I don't know how it works in, in Europe, but in North America, what happens is a standard hospital will have ER beds, a finite number of ER beds, maybe 20, 25, depending on how big the hospital is. And what happens is a patient comes into the emergency room, they assign that patient into a bed, they treat the patient for the emergency, and then they decide if that patient is good enough to go home or if that patient needs to be admitted. So that patient will move out, either go home or go into the hospital. Now what happens is that nurse that discharges the patient has to call cleaning services to clean that bed because potentially there's someone else in the emergency room, okay? Again, because of the chaotic environment in healthcare, that nurse may be on our way back to our system to actually do it, doesn't get to do it. So the bed is not available and patients are waiting in ER, and in the US we have what we call left without being seen. These are patients that actually come into the hospital, but because the hospital can't see them, they actually get up and leave. So for those of you that run business, this is as much as someone putting money on the table and you not taking it, okay? I know you don't want to say that about hospitals, but hospitals are there to make money. So when a patient leaves, it's critical for them. It's loss of revenue. So they took this same application, and now because we've tagged the patient, we know where the exit points are in the hospital. We know where the admission points are in the hospital. When a patient goes through one of those doors, we trigger the environmental services to go clean that room. Same data point, multiple applications. Okay? 
And the reason we can keep evolving those applications is because you standardize the data collection. The data is coming up from the same platform, it's the same data points. You just look at the use case or you talk to your end user and say, what else can we build with this data? We're collecting this data for you. What else do you want? What are the challenges do you have? And once you understand how you're extracting data through the API and the tools, trust me, you won't even come back to Zebra. You would just be like, okay, I want to subscribe to this new data set. And you focus on your application. And that's exactly what we want. Okay? For those of you that build applications today off you know, any of the social media platforms, you just go and add authorized API calls. You don't call Twitter and call Facebook and say, can you give me permission to do this data? It's there. You just go and you subscribe to that data. That's exactly how this should be. We understand exactly all the information that's out there on our own devices. Now let's make it available to you so you can build applications that are taking advantage of it. And then this, the, the Spotfire and AVP, their data is actually very similar, but two different applications. Our services organization is using this to provide services to customers to tell them exactly how their device is performing, tell them where their device is, tell them how it's going in the life management cycle. And then Spotify, our engineering team is using that same device to actually fine tune and build a better device for the next generation. So that's the right way to think about it. You think about it and say, listen, let me understand the data that you're providing us. If we're not providing you that data today, tell us. What are the data do you want from our devices? We can feed that back into the engineering team. We standardize on that data, make that data available, and then you can go build an application on it. Okay? Yeah. Can you tell us any more about how uh, maybe the data rates or the nature of the connection from the device? Because it strikes me that that could be quite a lot if you're doing proximity or accelerometer data or temperature. Yeah, it's, um, so right now, obviously from a scale perspective, we don't have a lot of people requesting data. Um, so it's pretty accurate. I mean, I could do an API call for you and you see how fast it is. I think one of the things that's going to happen is as we get more data to your point, uh, we will see how that scales. The good thing is the platform itself is hosted on AWS. Uh, so for you guys, it doesn't matter where you are, we'll yeah. start replicating the data. That bit seems okay, yeah. getting it from the device to, to the cloud or to the on-premise server. Yeah, so getting it from the device to the cloud uh, would obviously depend on network connectivity. So Spot, uh, Spotfire is actually a good one. Uh, in Spotfire, we can see how that device is actually connected. Is it via Wi-Fi, is it via GSM? And uh, we can see that the data rates are actually different, right? So the Wi-Fi connectivity actually provides uh, a, a faster time uh, to update on, on that. So again, it will depend on that particular environmental uh, condition to determine how fast that data comes in, right? So that's some of the things that you start fine tuning in your application, right? The application will have to uh, create leverage for that and say, okay, well, if my data is not updating at this rate, how do I want to use the data? You can adjust that. that that's, that's part of the, the beauty of it. Okay. It would be useful for you to Yeah, and, and it's it's interesting because I think it's also maybe something that we could uh, we could also capture. Um, so we could probably again, those are kind of tools that I, I think will make sense for you guys to have. Uh, I know one of the tools they're going to have uh, is kind of like Swagger that's going to allow you to actually see the speed of the API call, so you'd be able to test it, and that will allow your application to determine okay, this is how fast I'm getting this data. And so maybe in Swagger, what we can do is compare. Uh, the, the return rates based on the Wi-Fi versus the GSM network. But again, you know, we can't control the local connectivity of the device going into the cloud. We can only connect uh, the cloud into your application. Okay. Is there support for non-Zebra devices? Yes. Uh, the for IIS maybe also. Sorry? For the IIS is there? Yes. Uh, so for non-Zebra devices, we will support ARM embed-based uh, devices. So if it has the embed library in it, uh, we will be able to support it. So like the example I gave you, the Bosch. Uh, so, and this is one of the reasons why I say platforms are going to coexist. Bosch has its own platform. 
okay? Uh, but Bosch doesn't do supply chain like Zebra does. So they took that sensor and said, okay, we'll put an AM embed library onto it so this can support your devices as well. So we can capture the Bosch sensor directly. It doesn't go through the Bosch platform. Uh, and we've seen scenarios where they're saying, listen, on our platform, we want to take data from, from Zebra devices and integrate it into our platform. So, okay. I think we have, uh, we have time for probably a couple more questions. Okay. Maybe I have one more question. Yeah, please. Can I use, can I basically turn off the uh, transmission of the data from the Zebra to your cloud and use the Azure, for example? Oh yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So absolutely. Just close the device, so absolutely. keep the data private and move it to the, to the Azure? Absolutely, yep, you could do that. That's exactly it, I mean, we don't expect that it's uh, all partners that are gonna use the data. Uh, it might even be your customer. Your customer might say, you know, no, I don't wanna use the, the Zebra platform, but if you can get the data, just feed the data into, we're using Azure or, you know, another platform, that's absolutely fine. What we wanna do is make sure that our devices enable next generation applications. Now, from a platform perspective and how you make that decision, obviously we'd like you to use us, but yeah, <coughs> you're building for your customer. If your customer insists that no, you don't want to use this, but use the data because that data enables you to actually build the type of application I want, absolutely. Okay. Barry, correct me if I'm wrong here, but you could also uh, have a situation where you've got a customer that's on Azure, <coughs> yep. um, but there is benefit of also using our platform and linking the two. Oh, absolutely, and, and that, that's what I indicated. So the platforms <laughs> will coexist. They will talk to each other, um, and that's some of the stuff that we're doing as well. Um, so yeah. You know, one of the things we want to get to, and we understand this, right, is there's value in the data, okay? Um, there's value in offering more intelligence of our devices, okay? You guys today, you have multiple partners you can work with, and I think you're all here because you, you know, you're great partners of Zebra and you see some <coughs> of the products that we're building and the innovation we're bringing into our product. This is just another innovation. One of the things I tell people about the platform is we're not selling the platform. The platform is an infrastructure that we're building to enable new capabilities. So we're not coming to you to say, oh, pay us for the platform. No, we're using the platform to enable new type of data sets within our devices. It's the data sets we want to provide to you. We're just introducing the platform to you so you understand how we're building it. So when next year I come to you and say, listen, you can get all this data, Zebra data sets. Some people will say, how are you doing this? This is how we're doing it, okay? It's not the platform. To your point, I think someone asked earlier about Zatar. Zatar was kind of sold to you as a platform that you would use. No, this is an infrastructure. We believe that everybody's gonna have an IoT platform to enable this new next generation sets of data, right? That's why we built this, because there's no way for us to provide this data sets to you without a platform architecture. <coughs> That's exactly what the platform is. It's going to allow us streamline how we collect that data, and so we can support partners and end users with the data. So it's an infrastructure that Zebra has to build to enable this next generation applications. Okay? So, if there are no more questions, I will thank you very much for attending this morning.